Pops, it's not every day that we actually get some experts on the show. Um, you joke sometimes that we're two knuckleheads, but in reality, you know, we really are kind of like the sum of our parts. We we got to bring other people in, and we become we become even stronger. I thought I'd get a guest in today. Well, I, I think yeah, and and I believe you have you really truly have an expert as opposed to the two of us masquerading as experts. <laughs> All right, let's welcome in AMD, the car care nut here on YouTube, has an incredible YouTube channel. AMD, thanks so much for joining us. How you doing, guys? Thank you so much for having me. Um, for those who, are, who don't know my channel, haven't seen it, I'll introduce myself. Uh, my name is AMD. It's actually short for Ahmed. I am a Toyota Master Diagnostic Technician with over a decade of experience. I currently work at a dealership. Actually, I just got off work. Uh, <laughs> Um, I started a YouTube channel. I just wanted to uh, help the world, make the world a better place with my small token of contribution. And people liked it. And I'm so happy. Sometimes I, um, I look at how many views the channel gets and all that. And I'm just baffled that I am actually able to potentially help this many people. It's an honor, I think. Well, any, any, if I may, anytime you have the opportunity to help other people, um, it's like doing God's work. And, Amen. and, you know, the fact that, that you put yourself out there and that there's people that watch you and learn from you and that you've assisted, I think that's just the most wonderful thing that you could possibly do. And I admire you for that. Thank you. Thank you. And I admire you guys for what you are doing. You have your heart set in the right place. You're doing a wonderful service to people. So we're, AMD, we're trying. share a little bit with us. How did you get started in, in automotive in general and what inspired you? I mean, obviously you'd like to help people, which you've got the right kind of right heart, obviously, but what inspired you to get behind the camera? You got to be a little, you got to be a little crazy to do it because you got to yeah. make yourself vulnerable. <laughs> well, I started in cars way back when I was a kid. I just always loved cars. My dad hated me for that because I would um, jump in his car. I couldn't even reach the pedals and I would just keep fumbling with things. And he'd come up the next day and he's like, what happened here? Why is everything different? <laughs> well, yeah, um, I, I just loved cars. And my first car possibly is what made me a mechanic. Um, it was terrible. You know, first cars are always fun. <laughs> um, fast forward to actually immigrating to the United States. I, I am not originally from here. I'm from Iraq. I immigrated here. I wanted to remain in the automotive business, but in order to kind of getting the automotive business on the right foot here, things that are a little different. I had to get formal schooling and went through that, started with Toyota. I've always had, I've always liked Toyota. I actually used to own a 1989 Toyota Supra. That was wow. what got me into Toyota. But uh, it's it's been quite a journey with Toyota itself, uh, working at a dealership as a mechanic every day, just walking. Basically, I started from, had to start from zero all the way to where I'm at now. But uh, YouTube happened when uh, my wife always throughout this time kept telling me, you should start a YouTube channel. You should start a YouTube channel. And I'm like, I can barely take a picture, man. I'm not going <laughs> to start a YouTube channel. Every time I take a picture, you criticize it. Um, but COVID happened and my work schedule shifted to we're working well, six days a week, unfortunately. I'll say that a little bit of an alcohol workaholic. But uh, it's, we switched to three-day work week because there was basically no work. And she's like, well, this is the perfect time. You're always complaining and moaning that there's nothing to do because I just can't sit down. Not that type of person. So she encouraged me, and I was like, all right, but I'll just whip my phone, put it. Who's going to listen to me? But let's do this. And people listened, and I was shocked. It just, it just kind of took off, and I just ha had to like put the brakes and really start over. I was like, okay, this is becoming serious and, and I really have to put 100% effort. Um, my first videos, you know, they were dark, horrible sound and everything. <laughs> but even with that, people seem to like the information that it's coming hot out of the oven. And I just had to kind of um, learn how to work a camera. I mean, most people think, how hard can it be? Just put a camera, press record. It's a lot harder than that. Talking to a camera is a strange <laughs> feeling. <laughs> but no, uh, I, I was going to say, I, I think your wife must know my son um, because he kept saying, no, really, we ought to do a YouTube channel. And I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> and, uh, and, and the next thing you know, uh, 
you know, there, there's an audience out there for people yeah. like you and people like us. And, and uh, so it's, I, I applaud your wife for pushing you. Yes. She, she does so much for this channel. She's just, she's too humble, too shy to be a face as well, but she does so much behind the scenes. I, I don't think this channel would exist without her. For God sure, her. for yeah. sure. So AMD, talk a little bit, uh, if you don't mind, about the type of content that you do put out on your channel for those that aren't familiar. And then I got to get your take on what's going on in the industry right now. At YAA, yes. we talk constantly about the chip shortage, the supply mm -hmm. chain issues, and how they're impacting new car sales, used car sales, and prices in general. There's a huge segment of our audience that I'm sure would love to get your take on well, what's happening on the repair side. We recently did a stream where a couple dealer principals were telling us about how they have cars sitting in body shops for months. So yeah. what type of content can people consume over at the Car Care Nut? And what's your take on what's going on in the market right now? What are you seeing? So the majority of my content is anything Toyota Lexus Scion from how things work, from uh, general advice for non-car people who are looking to shop around, want to understand, is this car reliable? Why is this car reliable? And then on the DIY side of things, um, I do a lot of DIY videos. You know, if you, if you want to fix your car, I always encourage viewers, um, nobody's going to fix your car as good as you do, as long as you have the skills and willing to put in the time to learn. And by making videos, when I've done one job, I don't know, 2,000 times, it, it's much easier to, to teach it to somebody than someone just reading basically the book and trying to explain it. That's how really DIY videos come about when somebody's done the job and explain it. That I think is the best way to get across. Um, so basically anything Toyota, Lexus and Scion, I do a few side projects here and there, but the main focus is really um, what I know. I don't like to talk about things I don't know. I'll just try to help people as best as I can. But uh, yeah, the automotive business before this chip shortage, uh, for lack of a better word, it's, I would describe it as two things. One of them is a roller coaster, and the second one is organized chaos. Mm. And take that organized chaos and throw in the wrench of, we can't make cars, we can't fix the cars that are on the street now, and the cars are getting accidents we don't have parts for, because it's all just a giant cycle. And what I see on the service side of things is an enormous spike. I mean, usually, you know, at the dealership, yes, prices are high, but people come in expecting perfection, to near perfection. What I'm seeing lately is usually, you know, a customer comes in, old car, needs a ton of work. We're just pull them to the side and like, listen, this car is not worth fixing. Let's go talk to sales. Let's see what they can do for you. You know, find your used car if you're on a budget, if you can't afford a new car, let's find you a new car, let's try to help you on the trade and you know, we'll, we'll talk to sales so they get an idea, what does this car need, maybe they'll consider fixing it, usually that never happened, cars mm. that need a lot of work just straight to the auction and we're done. But lately, when we have this talk with the customer, they walk to sales and they wait right back, They're like, nope, fix it. Recently, I had a uh, customer flood their 2012 Camry. Granted, it had very low miles, but still, we basically told them, uh, if you call your insurance, they're probably going to total it, But so be ready for that. We're just preparing them for the worst case scenario. The customer looked, and he's like, I'm not even going to call my insurance. It's $7,000 on this car that, in my book, not even worth $7,000. Just didn't even flinch. Just fix it. It's like, that is unheard of in the automotive business. It's getting a little scary because I... Don't like when people make these, to me at least, and maybe the times are different, but these are not correct financial decisions, but I guess they're forced to do that. Well, with, with, the, with, the, with the wholesale values of used cars, what they are today, and, the, and then the equally high retail values of these cars, it, it really does pay for some people to just make an investment in the, in the, mm -hmm particular car that they have now i don't know that i would take a flood car and... yeah that's right yeah we're seeing a lot of that these days <laughs> yeah but I, I i get why people are trying to make vehicles last longer than than perhaps they were meant to yeah. or or perhaps than they should um because the cost of everything is just ridiculously high yeah. at the moment um i have a question for you and yes, um 
I'm, I'm sure that your dealership is, is trading cars that they then have to recondition that they want to put out in the used car lot or they're buying cars at auction. Have, have you seen a, a decline to any great degree in the condition of these cars that they are now suddenly saying, let's recondition them and put them out on the used car lot where in the past they would have never thought of it? So one thing about the dealership that I work at that might be slightly different than some dealers, some other dealers. It's a mom and pop dealership. It's a very, it's a small, the owner is involved in everything. He, he's cool. just that kind of person. He's very old school. He, he has a policy. Um, if, if it's not good for me, it's not good for the customer. That's, that's his very, he really lives by that. Uh, he's very harsh on sales right now because he's like, I'd rather send this car to the auction and have no cars to sell my customers than sell a customer car at an inflated price. And then the car is not perfect. He's like, I understand the market is high on the used car side. If we're going to sell them this car at high price, it better be perfect perfection, not anything less. Wow. Now, the only what we're noticing, and I, this is just this is uh, kind of hard to say between you and me when we're on the Internet. But let's say this is between us and the viewers talking to this to the there's one guy that's responsible for sending cars to the auction. He's like, we're almost getting retail price for them at the auction. Mm -hmm. So he's like, it really makes a lot of sense. If the car initially when this whole thing hit, they were scrambling to spend spending way too much money to condition cars to get them to be perfect. Like you get a car, a typical car. I mean, if it's rusty and it's horrible, that's gone automatically. But we're talking about cars that show up that have a lot of oil leaks, needs tires, needs brakes. Um, has a check engine line, needs diagnosis, and needs somebody who has dings and that. That's the typical car that before the dealership would just ask ah, too much work, let's just send it. Mm -hmm. We're not going to invest mm -hmm. all this money. But cars like that, they started. Actually, I remember I did an um, engine out uh, water pump on a Ford Taurus. And I'm like, why are we doing this? This is ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> this is a horrible car. I mean, even if it's in the greatest condition, this is a horrible car. Whatever, we did that, and I've never, I mean, sales typically at a big dealership, they will not even authorize you to do a tiny repair. They'll just be like, oh, it's not worth it, send it. But now we're taking an engine out of a car that's not our brand dealership to do a water pump. And it's like, this makes absolute no sense. But they stopped doing that when you send the same car to the auction and the dealership basically is not selling this car, not responsible for it. They're just disclosing anything they know about it. And off she goes. And for the same price, it's like, why are we not doing that? So they switched back to sending semi-nice cars to the auction. Well, God bless you that you work for, for a, a gentleman who who lives by the creed that if it's not good enough for me, it's not good enough for my customers. Yes. Um, unfortunately, he's in the minority yes. of dealers. Um, but but you're lucky enough to have found a, an owner like that, and oh. and uh, that, that's really a wonderful thing. Yeah, that's that's why I uh, many people I work 32 miles away from home. That's where the dealership. That's why I drive past possibly five four dealerships, Toyota dealerships, pretty big ones. I drive past all of them to drive that 32 miles to go there. It's just a good place. I'm happy at it. I've been there all this time, and. Uh, I appreciate the owner. I mean, our lot is scary empty because he, he does not want to sell over MSRP. He does not agree with that. He says MSRP is MSRP. That's it. At MSRP, basically, I mean, yes. going by the numbers, typically you'll get 500 off of MSRP, 600 off. When you sell at MSRP, you're making more than usual in yeah. normal times. Absolutely. So he's like, that's good enough because he has some real... He's, this theater has been around for a very long time. The group itself. Um, he doesn't want his 30, 40 year customer coming here and he's selling over MSRP. It just doesn't, he doesn't want to do that. That's I, like, I like your owner. I admire yeah, him. An, I wish nice there guy. were more owners like that. That, mm -hmm. that as Zach likes to say, is playing the long game and not the short game. That yes. realizes that, you know what? Two years ago, if you sold a car at MSRP, everybody would be high-fiving each other. And yes. and you know what? If everybody's selling them over MSRP, we're not going to sell them for more than that. 
because yeah. I mean, that's, that's more than they've ever used to get. Yep. It's all of a sudden. And you know what? I made a video about this and, you know, telling people, if you absolutely don't have to and you're kind of in a cringe, don't buy a car right now. It's just a horrible time. Unless AMD, you... it's actually it's actually stopbuyingcars.com is what you wanted to say. We yeah. we built the it's just the website <laughs> yeah. where my dad says it says <laughs> PSA stop sense. buying cars. <laughs> <laughs> Makes sense. I'm with you. Because yeah. I'm I'm sorry, did we not learn from past financial problems? All these cars are not like houses. Houses they gain value, hopefully. But cars, they don't gain value unless you're buying some exotic. They lose value automatically. Typically, typically. Yeah. These are not I mean, typical times in which we live at the moment. No. But my suspicion is that uh, typical times aren't all that far away, maybe 12, 18 yeah. months from now. And then we'll be Hopefully. back in typical times and they'll be depreciating assets again. Yep. Dealerships are only looking at, oh, we don't have cars. We're barely sell selling any. Let's inflate the price so we can meet our quotas or whatever. But the thing is, I'm sorry, but me and you, we work at dealerships. Car sales for a big car, new car dealership is not their major source of revenue. It's service. Yes. And service is booming. It is unbelievable. We cannot keep up. The cars, I mean, right now, the space that is typically filled with new cars is filled with service cars that are waiting for parts. And that's so, going to be one of my questions for you, AMD. What have you seen in terms of we've got a chip shortage, we've got a new car shortage. Do we have a parts shortage? Are you seeing anything longer lead times on parts for repairs, things like it, that? It is, again, it is chaotic. The, the thing is, at least I can speak of Toyota. That's who I work for. Toyota is so organized as a company. It's unbelievable how organized they are. But right now, things are all over the place. You order a part. Now... The parts is either going to be facing the local warehouse or it's going to be facing in a different city's warehouse. In that case, call, we call it national as a term. You're going to wait two, three days and the part will be there by FedEx. Well, now that you get the, and typically when it's not available anywhere, then it's in transit from the supplier. That's also typical that you're talking about one week. Right now, some, some major parts, I mean, we're not talking like engines and transmissions and big stuff, brake rotors. You go, nothing local, nothing national, supplier wow. zero in transit, and then you'll see 2,000 on back order. Wow. But then you typically even the back order stuff, you know, after a few days, you, they'll tell you, okay, um, here's a lead time. Here's an estimated date of arrival. Now, nothing. You just limbo. You just <laughs> sit there. And then all of a sudden, and, and this is where I, I had a, I'll tell you this. I had a Tacoma that uh, a rodent chewed the evap hose, just a little plastic hose on top of your fuel tank. Rodent got there, chewed that hose. That car just got finished finally, sat for two months and a half for a hose about this big. Oh, my God. Yep. That's... Just sitting there collecting lot rot. Wow. A tiny little hose. And it was the same thing. We ordered a hose. There is 400 on back order. And nothing, no ETA at all. Then all of a sudden, one day we're just, okay, well, we made a program. We're going to start this car and move it every two weeks. So win a rot, we battery wouldn't die and everything. All of a sudden, it just showed up. No ETA, just just showed up. Wow. Like, okay, we're not going to complain. But... <laughs> <laughs> Your perspective there, AMD, is, is I think our audience is going to like eat that up. And, and it's a reason to go subscribe to your channel. Again, the car care, not AMD is dropping these nuggets left and right. He goes live on Saturday nights an hour after we do. So there's your back-to-back -back power hour of, uh, of automotive <laughs> insights on YouTube. You uh, YAA at 7 Eastern, uh, AMD at 8 Eastern. Um, so it's just incredible the service that you're doing, the information that you're sharing. Um, if people want to learn more about you, obviously the car care nut. I, I, I'm going to, I'm going to do a leading question here, AMD. Maybe there's future collaborations that we can do again. Maybe we Absolutely. can do a live stream together and, and, and pick your brain even more, but where can people learn more about you? Mainly right now, my channel, I do post some um, stuff on my Instagram, the stuff you're not related to the channel, more of here's some crazy things I see in the shop, like jobs I'm working on. I mean, at the dealership, I, they are very nice. They allow me to take pictures short videos here and there and sometimes they allow me to do things on the side but um, i can't obviously film in the dealership with customer cars that is just not 
not something that's possible, unfortunately. So I'll show the viewers things behind the scenes. I mean, how, right now with, with the way YouTube is, uh, everybody probably have seen an engine out of a Lamborghini out and torn apart and all that. There's a lot of these channels. But nobody has seen an engine out of a, I don't know, a Corolla that yeah. everybody drives and there's millions of them. But yet nobody talks about it. I mean, it's still... <laughs> There's still people that drive these cars and they wonder what's inside of this. Being a Toyota, usually you're not really going to be inside, but I only work with the sick ones, so I see them. So <laughs> that's <laughs> well, I'm going to I'm going to share a, a little nugget with you. Uh, I, there was there was a brief period in my life when I had a, a golf pro shop in Mesa, Arizona, and at that time it was just down the street from the GM Proving Grounds when the Proving Grounds were in Arizona. And engineers used to come into my shop all the time, and they'd always drive different cars. And one day, uh, one of the engineers showed up. He was driving a Lexus. And I said, and this was in 1989 or 1990. And I, I said to him, just out of curiosity, wh why do you have so many different cars? He said, we buy every manufacturer's cars so we can tear them down and see how they're built. I said, okay, that's interesting. What's the best built cars that you've seen out there? He said, Lexus, hands down. Toyota, Lexus, they're the best built cars in the world. That was in like 1989, 1990. Yeah. And I have a feeling that's still probably true today. Yes. Well, the thing about Toyota is um, they're not perfect. And, and this is one thing about my channel. I am not just a Toyota fanboy. Yeah. I love Toyota and I respect them as a company, but... They make a mistake. I'm going to say it is a mistake. And, and you know, nobody's perfect. We're all human. Yeah. But uh, the thing about Toyota is their ways of doing things. Most people always come hard at them. They're not innovative and they're slow to adapt to new stuff and their stuff is boring. It's the same thing. But you know what? That's the best thing about them. People just yeah. miss the point. Not everybody is a car guy. Look, I'm a car guy. You guys are car guys, but not everybody out there is a car guy. Some people just want honest to God, reliable transportation. They don't, you know, they, I get in some cars that Toyota makes and I'm like, oh my God, the, the road noise is incredible. But I also own an S-Class on the side. This is my hobby car. Mm -hmm. But most people will get into this car and they'll think it's super nice. So when I come out and blast this car for being too loud, too basic, too horrible, they're just going to look at that and be, well, this is not a good car then, is it? But that's not the case. People, yeah. Somebody needs to come out and say, okay, this car has its flaws. If you're really sensitive to noise, that might bother you. But otherwise, this is a very reliable car. Yeah. That's a whole different perspective on things. Absolutely. Well, I feel so glad uh, that we were able to make this happen, AMD. We wish you nothing but the best with your channel. The education that you're providing your viewers is heaven sent, and I hope that it continues to grow and grow and grow. And thank goodness that you took the initiative during the beginning of the pandemic to do what me and my dad did and get behind an iPhone. And I'm sure the lighting of those first videos. Yep. Yep. So man, the lighting and the audio were so bad in those early videos, but millions of people now have benefited because of that. And hopefully our audience, I'm not hopeful. I know our audience has gotten a lot out of this video. I'm hopeful that we'll be able to do more of these in the future. And I can't thank you pops and you AMD. You guys are the pros, the real pros that are here to help spread the message. So thanks for educating everyone out there. Well, my thanks to AMD. He's the man. Thank you, sir. I really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for having me. Yep. Thanks for being here. Thank you, Zach, for putting this all together.